So day two of uh, limits. Today we'll do them algebraically. So yesterday, I mean, you think about it, you didn't need, surely didn't need your calculator, and you really didn't need to do any computations. Like you just looked at the picture and got the answer. Today that's not going to be the case. We're going to do some algebra today. Uh, first, a quick look at the limits, the properties, but they all work like you think they would work. Like the limit of sums is the sum of limits. The same thing with difference and product and quotient and a factor. Like it all works like you think it would work. So there's really no really notes to do there other than do it like you think you ought to do it and you'll be right. Thank you. Um, methods for evaluating limits algebraically. There are several methods um, that, let me just outline the methods now, but then we'll go through them. Substitution is the first method. It's our favorite method because you don't have to do anything other than substitute. Uh, the second method would be factoring. That's mainly what we'll focus on today. So that's uh, Tuesday, today. And then tomorrow we'll get to method three and four, dealing with fractions and square roots. This section is why I had, or I joked about having the stamp made and then someone made it for me. Calculus is easy, algebra is hard. Like the calculus part isn't a big deal. It's just can we handle the, the algebra parts today? All right, method number one, substitution. Plug in the value that x is approaching for x and see if you get a real number. If you get a real number, that's your answer. So there's nothing crazy or tricky about these. As x approaches 1, let's just plug in 1 and see what happens. So the numerator would be 4 minus 8, negative 4. The denominator, 2 minus 4 is negative 2. My answer is 2. There's nothing crazy about 2, so 2 is my answer. We like those. There's like, there's nothing tricky about them. You just plug it in. And the, the trick is you always try that first because that's what leads to the other situations. So you always start with substitution and basically hope that it works. So plug in 2. 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 plus 10 is 16. So 3 eighths. Sometimes they're easy. Plug it in 0. Negative 5 thirds. Again, as long as you get a number, all is well. Um, somebody asked yesterday, were we going to need to know the unit circle in this unit? And I said not very often, but occasionally. Um, what's the cosine of 0? 1. One. Three times zero is zero. Okay, that's a problem. Because one over zero, I can't do that. So uh oh, there's we need we don't know enough to handle that yet. So we need to we'll put a pause on that one. Because it's one over zero doesn't work. What else can we do? Well, there's nothing else to do yet. Um, yeah, let's keep going. We'll come back to that one in a minute. How about the sine of zero? Zero. What's zero divided by seven? Zero. So that's fine. That's a regular normal number. We can, the answer is zero. E to the infinity. E to the infinity. So that means e times, e times 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 e 
forever. What kind of number are you going to get if you do that? Infinity. Infinity. You get a really, really big number. And infinity <coughs> divided by natural log 2. Natural log 2 isn't really doing anything because you're still going to keep going times e times e times e times e. So that one is infinity. And infinity technically means it doesn't exist. So infinity is not too bad to figure out. It's just it's infinity. It goes off up or down forever. All right, this last one. If we plug in infinity, which sounds kind of weird, but you can still think about it and see what happens. 1,000 over 2 infinity minus 4. Two times infinity minus four. What's that going to be? That's still infinity, right? You double a really big number and then you subtract four. Well, you still got a really big number. What about a thousand divided by infinity? If I had a thousand dollars that I was ready to give away to every single person on planet Earth, that's not even infinity, but it's a big number. Uh, how much money is each person going to get if I'm going to give away my $1,000 to each person and give them all the same amount? I have $1,000. I'm going to divide it up equally among everybody on earth. No, I'm not giving everybody $1,000. I couldn't afford to do that. I can't afford to give away $1,000, but I sure can't afford to give away 1,000 times how many people are on earth. $8 billion maybe? Well, what do I do if I have a thousand divided by a gazillion? How many? How much money is each person going to get, roughly? Pretty much nothing. And the more people there are, the less they're going to get. So even though a thousand is big, infinity is immeasurably bigger. And so if I try to divide up my thousand dollars equally among a gazillion people, pretty much everybody's getting nothing. Well, you, I mean, yes, but remember limit means where are we headed to zero, right? So yeah, officially, mathematically, if I divide my thousand dollars among eight billion people, everybody gets, you know, 0. 0.0001 cents or whatever it is. But if I keep adding more people, like that was a, a concrete example of a billion, but if it's a billion billions and a billion billion billions, yeah, we're getting zero. Where are we headed? Not necessarily do we get there. This is an asymptote thing. All right. Let's go back to, to D. Now that we've handled some of these weird situations, let's go back to, to this uh, situation. So cosine of 0 is 1, 1 divided by 0, but if I plug in 0, let's see, but I'm not, I mean I'm plugging 0 the first time, but x approaches 0 means I'm plugging in something really, 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 really small. This is sort of the opposite of the problem we just did. If I divided 1 divided by 0 0.00000, what is that headed toward? Do you know? It's headed toward infinity. Okay, so there's a... This one's maybe a little harder than the dividing $1,000 by a million people. Pretty much everybody gets zero. I don't know a good concrete example of, of that one. Here's the summary of those last four. But it'd be better if you didn't have to memorize that, if you could just understand what each of those represent. So here's, here's question D. If you get a non-zero non real number divided by zero, then your limit is infinity, because you're dividing a, a number by something really small. If you get a non-real 
a non-zero real number over infinity, this would be example G, this is where you've got your thousand dollars and you're dividing it equally among everyone on earth, pretty much everyone gets zero. If you have a zero in the top, then it doesn't really matter what's in the bottom. Thank you. If you have a zero in the top, it doesn't matter what's in the bottom because zero over anything is going to be zero. That was uh, example E. And then if you have infinity in the top, then it doesn't really matter what you divide by. You're still going to have infinity because infinity is not a number. It's just this idea of further and further out there. And so it doesn't matter what you divide by, you're still going to get infinity. That one's F. So you can memorize those rules. Not really the preference. It'd be better if you just understood what's happening in each of those situations. Cole? So they're giving us like, what's happening, and like we get an answer that we don't know what we're going to get, but we just go back to these, whatever they're telling the rules. Why would we ever need factors? <laughs> Okay, because what what hasn't happened here, it's a good question, like, why do we need factoring? Because, like, everything is covered here. But everything's not covered here. Because we've got number over zero, zero over number, number over infinity, infinity over number. What we don't have... That's exactly right. What about infinity over infinity or zero over zero? Because it's like, well... If infinity is in the top, the answer is infinity. But the, if infinity is in the bottom, the answer is zero. But infinity over infinity, I mean, does that really cancel out? Because they're not, maybe they're not the same infinities. Like, what's going on here? It's kind of the same problem with zero. Zero in the top is usually zero. Zero in the bottom is usually infinity. Zero over zero, I don't know. Turn the page and... You are you walked right into the uh, the next line of the notes here. <coughs> we don't know, like we really don't know. That's why they're called indeterminate, because I if you just have those, that's not enough information. Um, there are some others. We don't deal with these others, but basically the conflicting rules, um, like. 1 to the infinity. Well, you say 1 to anything is 1, but infinity is really, really far out there. What if that's not really 1? Infinity minus infinity. Again, those aren't numbers, so that's not like 7 minus 7. That's like something way out there minus something way out there. Do they cancel or not? It's indeterminate. But for us, indeterminate will be 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. And plus or minus, that doesn't really matter. That's not the main thing. So I guess here's our flow chart of methods. Do substitution first. And then if you get 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, then you've got to do one of these other methods. <coughs> Factoring, that's the one we'll do today. Some crazy fractions tomorrow and some square roots tomorrow. And you'll pretty much know by looking right away which method to use because there'll either be lots of fractions in the problem or there'll be square roots in the problem or you'll look at it and you'll be like, yeah, I can probably factor that. So once you get 0 over 0, picking the next method is really not that hard. Uh, I think I just summarized the next couple lines here. So let's look at factoring. Um, by the way, we are supposed to do substitution first. So let's see if we get an answer. So if you get an answer, you don't have to factor. If I plug in negative 2, square that I get 4, and then plus 8 minus 12 over 4 minus 4, 
Yeah, that's zero over zero. So I, I do need to do something else. Back up a second. If you get zero over zero, that means there's a hole in the graph. And maybe that makes sense. We talked about that yesterday. If you factor it, if factors cancel, there's a hole. But if we sort of don't cancel the factors, that would make a 0 over 0. So this graph has a hole at negative 2. Which, not that we need help factoring, but it can help us factor. If negative 2 makes the top and bottom 0, that means x plus 2 is a factor of top and bottom. So there's sort of some built-in factoring hints if you know what you're doing. Hopefully you don't need them for problems like this, but let's see, x minus 6 and x plus 2 would work. x plus 2, x minus 2 in the bottom. So we can cancel the x plus 2s. And then we do substitution again. Probably should have put this up at the... Uh, so after we try one of our methods, we loop back around and try substitution again. So now let's plug in negative 2. Negative 2 minus 6 is negative 8. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. So my answer is 2. So that means there's a hole there because the factor's canceled, but the value is at 2. I don't know what this thing looks like, but x is negative 2, the hole's at positive 2. Again, I don't who knows what the graph looks like, but there's a hole at x equals negative 2 and the y value is 2. Part B, or example B. If we plug in 3, 9 minus 9 is 0. And then in the bottom, 9 plus 3 minus 12, 0 over 0. That's not, that doesn't work. We don't, that's indeterminate. So let's factor. x plus 3, x minus 3. Um, x minus 3 should be a factor that cancels, so you can kind of use that to your advantage when you're factoring. x minus 3's cancel, and then we substitute again. 3 plus 3 is 6, 3 plus 4 is 7, 6 sevenths. Why don't you try part C, example C there, and then substitution again. No, there's no place to substitute on the bottom, but that's okay. 2 times 2 plus 3 over 2 would be 7 halves. yesterday, maybe it was last week, the math teachers were discussing how whether students in pre-cal should go to college algebra or calculus or calculus BC and, you know, is it a grade thing? Is it a work ethic thing? Is it sort of both? Like how much math ability you need? And one of the teachers, Mr. Fisher, actually, he's like, why don't you just give them a quadratic where the lead coefficient isn't one and if they can factor it, good, you can take calculus. If you can't factor it, don't take calculus. One question, entry exam, there we go. And that's a little bit overkill, but it's not a bad, uh, it's not a bad deal. Like if you had trouble factoring that, then calculus is going to be a struggle next year. If you factor it, no problem. Calculus still might be hard, but you'll be, you'll be all right. You'll get there. So that's sort of in the vein of uh, course selections are out. So choose wisely.
Part D. Negative 3 cubed is negative 27 plus 27 is 0. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So yeah, they're pretty much all going to be 0 over 0. Do you remember how to factor x cubed plus 27? x plus 3. There's a acronym that goes with this. SOAP. And SOAP tells you what the signs are. Same, opposite, always positive. But SOAP doesn't tell you what goes in the blanks. Do you remember what goes in the blanks? This would not be a calculus gatekeeper because most people do fit this. So. First value squared. First value squared. The um, multiply together. Multiply them together. And then the last. Um, and then square the last one. Square the first one. Multiply <coughs> them together. Square the last one. All over x plus 3. The x plus 3s cancel. As we expected because... We were pretty sure there's a hole at negative 3. So substitute 9 plus 9 plus 9. Well, that's easy enough. Why don't you try letter E because there's another cube in there. So you try that one. There's our factors of top, factors of bottom. X minus 2 canceled, as we expected they would. Plug in 2. <coughs> 4 plus 4 plus 4. 4 twelfths is 1 third. Factor, cancel, substitute. Well, I guess we should substitute to see if it works, and then factor, cancel, and substitute again. So factoring a difference of cubes, it always starts with the cube root of each piece, cube root of x cubed and the cube root of 8, and then square the first one, multiply the two together, square the second one. Last one, factor out an x from the bottom. The x's cancel. Substitute again. Here's the only reason I wanted to work this one. It's one of my favorite math answers of all time. Is that right there? I've only gotten that like twice in 20 years of teaching, but I think it's humorous when it happens. Do you see what the person did? The X is canceled, so there's nothing there. You're like, well, I mean, sort of, but don't do that. Right? That's one half. Um, all right, this last piece is really more for calculus, um, and I, I sort of broke the rule, and then I, I started fixing it. Please do not write that a limit is equal to 0 over 0, because a limit is never equal to 0 over 0, because 0 over 0 isn't anything. So up here on B, if you do it, you should go back and say, whoops, it's not equal to 0 over 0. It's equal to something else. And so a, a way around that is to not even put equal signs in there. And so like, I know what you're doing, but we can't say that it's equal 0 over 0 because that's not right. And you see that I stopped putting equal signs in there because I remember that rule that it's not equal to 0 over 0. It's equal to 27 or 7 halves or whatever. So you can put 0 over 0 on the page, but do not say the limit is equal to 0 over 0, because that's not true. The whole point is, it's not 0 over 0. you got to figure out what it is. All right, complex fractions, that's tomorrow. So today is just factoring and simplifying. It's just factoring, really. So on the worksheet for today, it's worksheet 2 but only 1 through 9. Worksheet 2, 1 through 9. I mean, that'll make sense because 1 through 9 you can factor. 
and then you get to number 10, it's like, whoa, that's weird looking <coughs> fractions. That's tomorrow. So today is 1 through 9. Tomorrow we'll tackle the rest of them.